Well, hello, everybody. We're so happy to have you here because we have a special conversation together. Uh, I'm sure it will uplift you. So let's first introduce ourselves. Let's let's see, let's do it, Blanca. <laughs> <laughs> so um, first, I would like I would love to uh, present a little bit of the context. And um, for those who don't know me yet, I'm Chizu Sakamoto. I'm a French embodiment mentor and light language activator. I help um, leaders, consciousness leaders and entrepreneurs to break through their glass ceiling and thrive in their soul work the feminine way. And that's, I think, what our, our you know, the thing that connected us, right, Blanca? The thing that we are here to bring the feminine way in every way, and especially in thriving and business and, I mean, everyday life, right? Because I feel like people are tired of over uh, training themselves. They are tired of the struggle paradigm. They are tired of being burnt out. They want to feel uh, radiant and, and soulful and ease and peace and flow. So that's what I love to bring and enlighten in you, your original light language that brings multidimensional healing. And I'm so happy to have this conversation with you, Blinkla. But first, can you introduce yourself? Because you have so much magic too. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, we sing the same song, Jesus and myself. Many things are just exactly identical. I love to work with uh, women, women leaders who have been in the realm of the masculine and the realm of hustle and intelligence, you know, the ones with the MBAs and the PhDs. And they don't know, they feel like calling towards something beautiful and softer. We have no idea what that is. Uh, since I have allowed myself to go into the softness, I have gone very much into the spiritual but uh, uh, in, what I want to help people well women specifically is to marry these two things to marry mm -hmm. the highly spiritual and the highly practical it really is dissolving this duality uh, so first is to realize that we are in the duality <laughs> because we are very much here we connect with the body and then marry these two energies. Why? Because now is the time. Why? Because all humanity is wanting and needing this. And that's where we connected Chiso and myself because the last time we met, we ended up talking about Setna. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Exactly. Who, what is Setna and what are her teachings? her maybe opening yeah invitation maybe for humanity right absolutely absolutely well you know i suffered trauma uh, and i thought well first of all i never thought that i suffered anything i was just hard working going for the masculine boom 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 and uh, I didn't realize that this was coming out of trauma. Mm. I didn't realize that this was coming out of the patriarchy and my own father. Uh, I didn't realize that it was the father in, as represented as corporations, the father represented as government, the father represented as mm. <clears throat> even language and technology. And uh, as I discovered trauma of my own life, I, at first I developed shame and I was just all by myself in my shame. Mm -hmm. I was able to ask for help and I got help. And then I started talking to people and I discovered that other women also had trauma, uh, not just uh, Mexican or Latin American women, but all European and Asians and Africans and uh, and then I started discovering, actually, that what is trauma is almost like the human condition. And I started discovering a beautiful path for me was astrology. Yeah. Uh, in fact, the moment when I discovered trauma was when Pluto was very active in my own chart, because Pluto 
is this planet that uh, that helps you to um, to to look into what needs to die in your life so that you can birth something new where you can find a deeper truth, a new meaning when you can't really, it's, you know, it's uh, like uh, the butterfly, but what it is with Pluto. So it's like uh, we, we dive in the shadow and allow that to be brought up to, so that we can rebirth. Is it, is it right? I mean, Pluto is also a, a representation or the god of the underworld. And I feel like we we sometimes um, have a misconception about the underworld in our life because it is also a, a whole um, portal for us to go through, like a portal of initiation of, you know, some kind of a... Um, a rite of passage that we go through. So no fear about the shadows. The more we resist to this big resistance, actually, or this big shadow world, the more we are um, not enabling us to go through and see the golden uh, frequencies and um, nuggets that we are here to receive. Is, is that Absolutely. what it's about? Yeah. Absolutely. This is Pluto. Pluto, the lord of the underworld. Mm. And a lot of the world underworld, and of course, because you're a very enlightened being, she knows that that's where the gold is. But that's also where the field is. That's also where power, obsession, addiction is. And this is where death is. This is where corruption lives. This is what all these dark things live. And it's very interesting because uh, uh, Pluto was not a planet. Then he was uh, he was a planet, and then he was demoted not to be a planet. And right. I find that so terribly exciting or and interesting. Uh, Pluto was this demoted in 2006, but another uh, heavenly body was discovered in 2003. So it, it feels to me like a change of uh, power. Mm -hmm. And this new body that was discovered is Setna. And Setna is such an exciting story. Setna, uh, to start with, is a heavenly body that has a very different orbit to the Earth. It doesn't have a circular orbit, but it has a highly elliptic one. So it comes really close to Earth, very seldom, very, very seldom. The whole uh, uh, orbit, it is a whopping 11,408 years. So this lady okay, yes. doesn't, <laughs> doesn't get to, uh, close to us very often. The last time she was around was in the Neolithic. Mm -hmm. When we moved from hunter-gatherers to agriculture, when Stonehenge was built, I get the goosebumps just to say. Oh, yes. Can we sit in that energy, mm. like the nurturing and the building? Oh, pure creation. Yeah. So what is going to happen now? What could happen now? Mm. So that's what I'm going to get into the myth. The name Setna comes from the culture of the Inuits. There in the north where the eyes is very old and it's very interesting that now we're talking of ice melting as I find that uh, very poetic and metaphoric for what we're talking about so Setna was a princess a very beautiful princess and um, 
she was not very happy. I'm not very comfortable with uh, her society. She just wanted something different. And she fell in love with uh, an, another guy. But this guy was a bird. A bird. And the bird took her away. And she was in that society of birds. And she was like, I don't fit in here. It's just very strange, this bird society. So, of course, her father never liked that she will marry a bird. So he went to save her. But by this time, she was in love with the bird. And the father forcibly, forcefully, forcefully, I am a slaughtered English again. Oh, <laughs> he took her by force to uh, his boat. And she just wanted to to stay. And then in the struggle, she fell. She fell in the water, in the cold, icy water. We're talking about Inuits, North Pole. And then in this struggle, and then, you know, it is a legend. We don't know what happened. The legend says that the father chopped her hands. Oh, because she but was she moving died. too much the, the boat, she, right? She, she was uh, pulling the boat. Oh, yeah. And maybe she was going to kill him, you know, if uh, she really pulled the boat. Uh, maybe he did it to save himself. Maybe, indeed, he was so angry and disappointed that he actually wanted to kill her because he couldn't take her back because she was a disgrace to the family. But the point is, is that her father caught her hands and she just went down, down into the deep, deep, deep icy waters. And then, oh God, this it is just so emotional to me to think that, imagine you, not having hands dropping into the water and that being done by your own father. Mm. What goes in the heart of that lady? And then is when the, the story of course becomes fantastic and terrific that of course having a, a husband who's a bird was also fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> but there in the, uh, in the water, uh, everything starts changing everything starts changing in her body. And instead of hands, she starts developing creatures of the sea. Some even say that her legs change into a beautiful tail. And then she becomes Sedna, this goddess, the goddess of the sea, of the deep sea. And it has been told, of course, that Sedna feed us because that's where we get fish from mm -hmm. and of course she gets upset when she creates a, a tsunami waves, or, of, yeah, uh, yeah. waves of the sea and <clears throat> this has so much meaning so much meaning that we are starting to know because I mean she was discovered 2006 and the and, and she, orbit. Was, she was already close to us, right? She, yeah, yeah. So right now she's here, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right now, in April 2024, uh, she entered into Gemini, mm. and that is so exciting. Gemini is the duality: mm -hmm. men, women inside, outside, above, below, good, bad, black, white, all these uh, comfortable classifications that we have given to ourselves. I'm certainly in the side of the good guys because those other guys are the bad ones. Right. And it's very easy to blame. You know, to blame, we point a... Uh, uh, somebody and we always avoid thinking about the three fingers that point at our own personal responsibility mm, so Sedna this. comes right now right now <laughs> to tell us hey what needs to be dissolved 
the, of this duality of the certainties that you've been having of the things that you certainly think that are bad, certainly you think that are good, that we need to dissolve. Yeah. And particularly these certainties yeah. are frozen. Mm -hmm. Do, do yeah, because what what was also in this legend and, and beautiful story and and I feel like we can also receive the codes from this story um, is that actually she embodies the creatrix with no hatred or no desire to revenge or have revenge on her father or whatever it's it is what it is. And she embraces the ocean as the ocean embraces her. And it's beautiful because I feel like um, as women, we chose a body of a woman and we forget that we are the chaos and the calm of the ocean that gives birth and gives oxygen to our earth. And, and it's so fantastically everything, right? And that is beautiful. She doesn't hold any grudge or, you know, anger or resentment or whatever. She she has just dissolved that in, in the waters completely. Yeah. I, I think that element, uh, this letting go, is a big element of, uh, of Setna. Even if you are not ready to let go, you will be forced to let go. Oh. And maybe your father the patriarchy, the system, the corporations will force you to let go. And actually, you could argue that his father did something good to her because he forced her to become a goddess. Right. Whoa. He initiated her. Yes. And what are the hands, this hustle, these processes, this I have to, I should, I have to. And gripping, you know, like being attached to, yes. Mm -hmm. Attachments, I have everything this I have. What can we let go? I need to have, can I let go of, I don't know, clothes, a house, a money uh, or even a job because some people say that being fired from their job was the best thing that could happen to them not immediately when it happened because uh, we do get that it's like it could be a cold shower and what else is possible what are the infinite possibilities that open up from this Forced exactly. to be to let go <laughs> energy, exactly. right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And uh, you know, now that I, I was thinking, oh, oh, mm -mm -mm -mm. no, it does it doesn't coincide. It doesn't coincide. Uh, sorry, I take it back. <laughs> I was thinking of my life. What uh, what moved? What changed? So, uh, so Setna indeed invites us to uh, to ask herself the questions of what is beneath that we don't dare to explore? Mm. What are the questions that we don't dare to see? We don't dare to talk about. And of course, what are the attachments that we have? Um, uh, actually, I need to say something else, maybe Maybe the audience already knows the other myth of uh, Persephone and Hades. Persephone was the princess, the maiden, the innocent, who is taking care of the flowers and is just so sweet that doesn't think about, uh, you know, intimacy with a man <laughs> or dead or anything like that. And she's so <clears throat> virginal that Hades fall in, falls in love with her and takes her to the underworld. And in the underworld, she learns all these dark things that we were talking about Pluto. However, the very interesting thing about Persephone is that Persephone goes back. Persephone goes back and goes back renewed. And she goes back every single spring. Right. <laughs> and this energy of Setna has that of 
coming back from the underworld and this underworld with an aquatic nature. So we are going through healing trauma right now as humanity. It, the GSR 2024 to 2067. This is the time for healing. It is so exciting. I was I just uh, hang up with a friend of mine, a Ukrainian photographer. And she was telling me how she is working with uh, uh, psychologists and healers to heal women who suffered because of the war uh, using ancestral technology of healing and photography, photography. which is very yeah. modern with, you know, with uh, uh, all the technology of photography that we have today, not uh, last century photography. So uh, I see many other modalities of healing, healing with uh, dragons, healing with plants, healing with water, healing uh, every, many people will download from the field ways of healing that are going to be just so fast. And you, uh, I mean, uh, you, Chisu, you, the uh, audience, you are going to be guided to the best way to go to heal. Because let's face it, all of us, 100%, we have trauma. <laughs> and the healing is not about taking away the pain, it's transmuting it. It's just exactly like Setna. It's not that she got her hands back and she was exactly like she was before. It's that that trauma was the place where goodness, where her gift came. And this is what is going to happen to us. The thing that you were attached to, the thing that was the best for you, will become transmute. Yeah. And you will be guided in which will be the path for you. Mm. And that's also why we see that the the divine feminine is uh, rising and in different practices, in different perspectives. But what the divine feminine uh, is all about is first, it's in everybody. It's not just about the gender um, as, as men and women. We have that. It's the capacity to embrace. The divine feminine opens her arms and embrace everything. It brings back everything to unity. Nothing is to be rejected. Nothing is to be uh, put aside. It is total coming back to oneness, right? And we hold and we held and we, we hug everything. So that's beautiful. Reminding that there is no, there's nothing to be, you know, to, to avoid Same. seeing. The, the power of truth and purity is that as we sit and hold space for truth, for what it is, and release any judgments, any emotions that has been shushed or crystallized within, it goes through. And what it is and truth in itself is neutral. And as we come back to neutrality, then neutrality helps, uh, helps gives uh, the right, um, not the right, but the perfect ground for the flowers to bloom and exactly. to, you know, right, and to, to exactly. diffuse the scent of the flower. So this yeah. is the beauty of transmutation, of divine oh. alchemy, of you call it as you want. It's really being this inner and tranquil courage of observing everything, embracing everything, and letting the, uh, the waters Water something new. <laughs> yeah. Ah, oh, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful what you're saying of uh, this uh, embracing and embracing old sites, or particularly the things that you're ashamed about. Uh, recently, I made a video about the, the dark feminine, and mm. it's, it's just so poignant. Uh, we are so ashamed of our sensuality. Right. We are so ashamed of uh, our authority of saying no. We are so ashamed of our wisdom or, you know, uh, 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 this intuition, 
clairvoyance, this knowing without knowing, without having evidence. We're so ashamed of that because that is to be a witch or oh, that is, you know, you didn't go to university for that. that uh, Where's or, the science? <laughs> uh, all this that we have uh, labeled shameful, uh, labeled stupid, labeled crazy, label, you know, uh, you know, even I think about uh, uh, the gold digger, no wonder why we don't receive. <laughs> no, I'm the independent woman. I will never receive something from anybody. Uh, we need to re-embrace it. Re-embrace our intuitive capability, our sensuality, our patience. Oh, the other one, to rest, our passivity. We we need moments in which we need to be the mountain and don't move, really don't move. Be the magnetic mm -hmm. mountain. Oh, so, yes. Ooh. I can really... And this goes back yep. to Setna with... Uh, uh, um, the things that you have repressed in the eyes that you have thought that they are bad, they might be your food. Yeah, yeah I've been through two burnouts myself and learning this, okay. the luxury of immobility, of stillness. I only realized after the second time that I had some kind of a internal programmation program saying that, oh, if you stop moving, you die. <sighs> Interesting, right? And this is because we are taught and educated to be productive, you know, to get going to, okay, so if you fall, you go back up. Um, and being an entrepreneur, I had strengthened that mindset, you know, to go, 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 go forward and don't, you know, don't hold back, don't, which is kind of good in a sense, because it helps to get out of the comfort zone, it helps you expand, not to listen to uh, too much to the brain. And it also brings this shadowy side which we call the wounded masculine or, or dark masculine or false masculine, mm -hmm. um, which is making us become rigid, rigid in our thinking, rigid in our doing. And this, the moment I realized that, oh, wow, if I stop moving, I die, is the illusion. Everything came back to... Well, hold on a second. Does it mean that I agree with, in order to have, I have to do, and then I will be. Do, then you have, then you be. In order to have freedom and be free, then I have to do things to get the money and be free or whatever is freedom for you. My clients always tell me it's about freedom, uh, financial freedom. So we talk a lot about that. <laughs> So it's do, yeah. have, then be. Well, this is the contrary. It's the whole, everything has been inverted. Yeah. The shadow world is here. Let's make it clear, right? We are living in the shadow world. And Absolutely. the paradise is always here too, is also here. Duality, just like Blanca said. If heaven and, and hell are just the same um size of a coin right it's just the same coin two sides then we are also bringing or manifesting or seeing situations that help us come back to truth we be from being and stillness we listen and hear the perfect movement and that's it, because as we be, we already have. So the perfect movement will just reflect be and have in the matter. And that's where things come. We don't get, things just come to us. And this is so relaxing, right? 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, this this is the path. This is where we're going. Absolutely. This mm -hmm. is absolutely where we're going. Let me tell you a little story of a miracle, a miracle that happened to me. Sure. Um, uh, I was 39 and I wanted to be a mother. I didn't have a child. And uh, I already started my business. I decided to pay a very expensive coach uh, to help me to get clients. And uh, this woman was, you know, putting a lot of uh, pressure on all of us because, of course, she wanted to uh, deliver, you know, <laughs> on the, mm -hmm. what we need to do. Very, very masculine environment. So what went in, uh, uh, and I got pregnant and the masculine, the idea got into my brain. I don't have time for a baby. I don't have time for a baby. I need my return on investment. I, 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 I don't have time for a baby. Like this, I had a miscarriage, but like this. Wow. And uh, I had the blessing to have already a ticket to go to Mexico. And I went to visit my uh, Aztec goddess. And uh, of course, I was feeling awful. <laughs> no possibility of smiling like I do right now. Uh, I was crying. I was uh, devastated because uh, at that point, I was 40. Uh, I went to celebrate my 40th birthday and I was crying in front of her and uh, I was asking her, I, uh, I want to have a child and I just, uh, I feel so awful. I'm uh, with all the shame that we're talking about, all the shame right. of uh, what did I do is my fault uh, uh, because I said I didn't have time and um, just crying and something very beautiful happened in the imaginary. I felt that the God that was cleansing me and cleansing me, my family, my ancestors, my womb, my unborn child with blood. Mm. And it was such a beautiful image, not a scary image of Halloween, but a, an image of healing, of love, of health, of uh, power, of life. And then the funniest thing is that she spoke English to me and she said, it's done. Okay. Wow. What does that mean? Uh, and, and, and then, you know, she repeated, it's done in my mind. So then I said, what do I do? Uh, do, I, do I bring you flowers? Do I, uh, 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 what do I do? What do I, how do I say thank you? And she's like, uh, you know, this was more understood. That was more a thought than a, a vibration in another message. She said, don't you realize that I am the owner of uh, all the diamonds and all the gold and all the, you know, come on. I even own you. <laughs> I don't get anything. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and it was indeed done. Uh, the miracle is going to be 14 years old soon. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I'm laughing that uh, hmm. uh, maybe the tears is those the tears that I had that blood that I'd experienced might be Setna you know that we need to get into the shame we need to get into our vulnerability all these ideas that I don't have time is what's important what's really important and uh, this, I want to have money. Do you really want to have money? Or do you want to enjoy, enjoy, serve, serve, break the pattern of trauma of your family? Something more profound than just have money. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I think we need to change the questions. Exactly. Well, if we had all the money in the world, what would be, what would we, really do that's the question really like if we were to give you people <laughs> like let's be wild 50 millions dollars you or euros wherever you, wherever you are mm -hmm. then then what you what you're a set for life then what i, I love your are question. you really fulfilled with that yeah i love your yeah. question because you see the uh, 
the, recently, last Friday, I met a very good friend of mine. He is he has m m more money that you can I can dream of. He is really mi uh, a millionaire, and he is the happiest person in the world. He drives a very average car. Uh, his biggest problem was to hire a person that it, she will say yes to his uh, uh, hiring proposal. And he was so worried and excited about it. And then I thought, okay. wow, this is the embodiment of what a millionaire should be. To thinking, uh, he was thinking about how specifically he could help that person that he wanted to hire. And, you know, no fancy clothes or anything. It doesn't have to be complicated that we have to change the want to change the world, but it could be about uh, clean having time to clean the classroom of your children, have the time to <laughs> bake cookies, have the time to give a hug, and that gives you the idea in your mind that you already have all the money that you need. Yes, more than all the money that you need. Yeah. So go ahead, people, and write down, like, what is your true luxurious life? What is true luxurious? I realized um, when I, I was writing and journaling about this, um, that actually I had built a life that gives me the luxury of, you know, having a having breakfast at 11, <laughs> in my kitchen and just enjoy the sun, the birds. And yeah, and having this freedom of deciding with who I want to work, when I want to work, how I want to, you know, really spend and invest this life force that is called time. Time is precious and it is both it's both a space and a consciousness. Because really, what is time? It's not like really palpable, right? It is what what we, do we want to feel in this space of time, of beingness, of being present? And it doesn't have to be uh, all love and light. It, it can be, as Blanca said, super simple, very, very simple. And if you were to have this uh, beautiful money, would you like to contribute and how? I love to contribute um, buying stuff that are made from the earth that, are, that is close by, you know, and not buy uh, from foreign countries, for example. I like to, I love to contribute to my community here um, and to eat uh, very good products that come from the earth and are organic. And, you know, all that quality, daily quality, is really what's building your temple, your body, and this, you know, this longevity. And, and yes, then you can go and have vacations and stuff. But are, you, are we dreaming of fancy vacations because we think, we believe that we can't have the sensation now? I need to go to the sea. Well, just close your eyes and be at the sea now. You see how different things are then because you don't need anything. You just go and enjoy everything. Completely different. You don't need to escape your daily life. You are perfectly fulfilled and complete. Nothing to move, nothing to shift, nothing to... Sometimes I think to heal either. Just sit with the things, right? <laughs> And it's done. And from that place, how can it be even better than that, right? That's the question. How does it get even better? And what else is possible? How beautiful. How beautiful. You know, that I was, uh, this, my children inspire me these things. I was fantasizing with the children about holidays, now that you say that. What if the reality is that we are before we are born in oneness, a drop in the ocean of oneness, and we just want to go on holiday. Mm -hmm. And we come on holiday to the human experience. And we choose, okay, I go on holiday, and they have these catalogs of uh, holidays on earth. 
I want to be a woman. I want to be a man. I want to have, I don't know, I want to be Japanese. So I want to be uh, uh, Congolese. I, I want to be born. In... And then you yeah. come to this holiday that is called life. You know, and make it a beautiful experience. Make it the experience of um, uh, an slow, conscious, um, a spiritual human journey in every single moment that you have from, mm -hmm. you know, cleaning the floor uh, to, I don't know, negotiating the investment for your company, <laughs> from the most menial to the most uh, business-like, to the most spiritual, to the most, uh, I don't know, dancing salsa in your neighborhood. <laughs> It doesn't have to be in a way you can have this spiritual expansive experience in any activity you do. Yes. Oh, I love this conversation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is so cool. This is so juicy. Uh, yeah. What do you think, uh, dear audience? Shall we do this? more often what should we touch next time is there something that you would like to do should we do it live give us feedback feedback here in uh, in the comments what shall we do what do you think <laughs> yes the more we are in interaction the more we are co-creating together so give us some yeah what were your maybe your best also breakthroughs or intakes from this conversation did it open you to new perspectives. We'll be very happy to read your comments. And thank you very much, Blanca, for, wow, all this wisdom and for all and everything you do. And if you want to learn more about Blanca's work, I will put her, um, um, her links in the description below. So feel free to contact her. <laughs> yeah, thank you very I'll, much. I will do the same for Chisa. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. And thank you very much, everybody. Namaste. Take care. Thank you. <laughs>